Welcome everybody to another episode of Shot in the Dark. I am your host, John Ceno Evil here. Let's get right down to it. First of all, sorry for the delay. I am just coming back from Chicago to see All Out. Uh, what can I say about this show that hasn't already been said? It was amazing to see live. Um, just the energy, the crowd. Uh, obviously the surprises with Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, uh, CNC and Punk wrestle for the first time in seven years. Um, every match got a reaction. Like, doesn't matter who wrestled or who came out. The crowd was into it. Um, probably one of my top five favorite wrestling events to be. Uh, I've been to shows that had better wrestling overall, but as far as like the overall experience and just being around the crowd of people, uh, very hard to top that. Very hard to top that. Um, I just wish that next year they pick an event or a venue that has a uh, Wi-Fi so I can actually uh, use my phone for pictures and uploading and everything. That's my only complaint, really, about that uh, whole uh, experience. But um, definitely thumbs up for All Out. But let's get to the shows that led up to All Out and much more, starting with a special Saturday, AW Dark, that aired the day before All Out. We had 2.0 defeating Rosario Grillo and Hunter Knott uh, easily, with Jeff Parker pinning Knott after the two for the show. And after the match, they kept attacking them, along with Daniel Garcia, who was by their side. Willie Utah defeated Baron Black easily with the seatbelt pin. Julia Hart defeated Heather Reckless with a split bulldog. We go to a press conference for the John Moxley and Satoshi Kojima match. Uh, Moxley takes a cheap shot at Tanahashi, saying that as soon as he was done in LA, he left for Japan. And then Kojima pretty much says he's going to kick Moxley's ass, and they both get into a brawl. We get a, a, a promo backstage from Julia Hart. We actually had a couple participants from the uh, Casino Battle Royale throughout the night hyping up. But in this one, it's uh, of note because Julia Hart was talking about how she's going to win the Casino Battle Royal, but then she gets taken out by Jade Cargill and Nyla Rose. Uh, so as you probably already know, she was replaced. We'll get back into who replaced her later on. Hiku Rashida defeated Missa Kate with the Falcon Arrow. Red Velvet defeated Sky Blue with the final slice. Really good back and forth match here with the Chicago crowd fully behind Blue. After the match, Tony Khan came out and invited Blue to the Casino Battle Royal to replace, to replace Julia Hart. Sean Spears and Warlow defeated Brandon Gore and JDX after Spears, Pan Gore, uh, after Warlow hit the Casualty of War. John Silver and Ten defeated Zachariah and Ren Jones, with Ten making Zachariah submit to the Full Nelson. Penelope Ford defeated Queen Aminata by submission with her version of the Indian Deathlock. Frankie Kazarian defeated G- Dean Alexander with a Chicken Wing. And Jade Cargo defeated Blair Onyx in under a minute with Jaded. The main event for this show was Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus defeated Chaos Project. Jungle Boy pins Sir Pentacle after the Thoracic Express. But after the match, CM Punk comes out, big reaction. Uh, he thanks the crowd for singing the Jurassic Express song. And then he starts singing the Golden Girls theme song. But he makes a joke about Jungle Boy not being old enough to know the lyrics, which he did not know the lyrics. He sends the crowd happy with more words and even teases someday fighting Jungle Boy. We go to Monday's AEW Dark Elevation after All Out. Bear Country defeated Peter Avalon and Ryan Nemeth. Um, Bear Country pins Nemeth after the elevator splash, but J.D. Drake and Cesar Bononi run in after the match and keep attacking them. Emi Sakura defeated Miss Kate. Lance Archer defeated GPA, destroyed him easily with the blackout. Kira Hogan gets her first one in AEW, defeating Blair Onyx with her finisher that she calls Face to Music, which is a swinging fisherman neckbreaker. Nala Rose defeated Lady Luck quick with the Beast Bomb. Beast Bomb. Anthony Bowens defeated Griff Garrison. Um, the of note thing that happened here was Max Caster makes his return, and he knocks Garrison out with a chain, so Bowens gets the pen that way. But Pillman comes out, Brian Pillman Jr. comes out, with a pull cue to scare off the acclaimed. Red Velvet defeated Queen Aminata with the final slice. We go backstage and see the Dark Order, uh, who are missing Alex Reynolds. They said that he actually walked away from the Dark Order because of all this dissension that's going on. So Alan Five Angels gets in the face of Evil Uno and challenges him for a match. John Silver and Ten defeated Isaiah Moore and Travis Titan. Ten makes Titan submit to the full Nelson. Dante Martin defeated J.D. Drake with a moonsault off the top rope. Uh, on commentary, Paul White was talking about how he hasn't talked to Billy Gunn since he turned on him, but he's very disappointed on what he did to him. Rio defeated Sky Blue with a double knee strike that she calls a Samato. And in the main event, Darby Allen, John Moxley, and Eddie Kingston defeated Chaos Project and Ricky Shane Page. Allen gets the pin on RSP after a coffin drop. Tuesday's AEW Dark had Lance Archer defeated Jason Hosh with the blackout. The Bunny defeated Lady Luck with Down the Rabbit Hole. Uh, in the Battle of the Dark Order, Evil Uno, accompanied by Cole Cabana and Stu Grayson, defeated Alan Five Angels, who was accompanied by Ten and John Silver. With the Something Evil, there was a lot of confusion on the outside from all the members, not knowing what to do. But after the match, after Evil Uno wins, he just kind of walks out on everybody. During this match, the crowd was chanting, please don't fight, as they don't want to see the Dark Order fight. 
the acclaimed have the return match here, defeated Sean Dean and Robert Anthony. So Caster comes out with a script that he's a. Uh, it, it sounds like a rap from AEW management, including a promotion to Rose to the Top and all this other stuff that Caster would never say. So Caster goes and rips it up, and then he does his own little freestyle, and he even mentions that he'll make his opponents cry like that fan did for Phil. And Taz says, "Who's Phil?" Caster gets the pin quickly on Anthony with the mic drop. Joey Janelle defeated Lee Moriarty with the Death Valley Driver after some assistance from Kyla Rossi. Um, the commentary team says that they still don't know her name yet. So after the match, Sunny Kiss runs in and attacks Janela. Cole Cabana and Stu Grayson defeated Travis Titan and Ricky Shane Page after Cabana pins Titan after the Chicago Skyline. And in the main event, Big Swole defeated Diamante in a three strikes fight. So with this is the first fall is a pinfall, second fall is submission, third fall is a knockout. So Diamante gets the first fall by rolling up uh, Big Swole by holding the trunks. Swole gets a submission with an ankle lock. And the third fall, Swole wins after knocking Diamante out with a dirty dancing with a chain wrapped around her fist. We go to NXT UK. We start the match. It was supposed to be Blair Davenport versus Nina Samuels, but the match never gets started as Davenport attacks Samuels before the bell. Reps come in. They try to stop her. Even Sid Scala comes in, but Davenport attacks him. So obviously there'll be repercussions for this. They show highlights of Ginny and Eva Valkyrie, and it's reported that Valkyrie is out with an injury as a result of the match. Jack Stars and Dave Mastiff defeated Dan Maloney and Andy Wilde. Mastiff pins Maloney after the cannibal, but Stars and Mastiff, they worked really good together as a tag team. Pretty Deadly are outside trying to do a TikTok video, but they get interrupted by Joe and Mark Coffee, who said that they want a title shot, and they pushed them into the water behind them. Amelia McKenzie defeated the male. A male had the match pretty much won, but McKenzie is able to roll her up for the surprise win. Ashton Smith and Oliver Carter barge into Saxon Huckley's locker room and said that they want him uh, to team up with them to face the, uh, Symbiosis next week. And the main event, a Heritage Cup tournament match. Teoman defeated Nathan Fraser. Teoman gets the first pinfall in round two. Fraser comes back in round four with a power slam into a roll up. But Teoman gets the final pin in round five with a flipping DDT after a bit of distraction from Rohan Raja on the outside. NWA Power at the end defeated Jordan Clearwater and Sai on the Mystery Man with Odinson pinning Clearwater after the Hell on Earth. Judas easily pins Jeremiah Plunkett with a razor's edge. After the match, James Mitchell tells him to do it again, but James Storm comes out and stops him and challenges him to a match. We get the former War Kings tag team partners, Crimson and Jack Stane. They have a face-off, and Crimson challenges Jack Stane to a match next week. Kylie Ray defeated Tootie Lynn by submission with a crossface, and Mims and Sal Renaro defeated Marche Rocket and Slice Boogie in the NWA Tag Team Tournament with Mims pitting Boogie. The show closes with Nick Aldis, who seems a little bit out of character. He apologizes to Kyle Davis, uh, Billy Corgan, and the audience, and then tells that Trevor Murdoch, he is a champion now, but now he has to do all the work that he's champion, uh, all the tour press, all the media, all the podcasts. And Aldis says that he himself will become world champion once again because winning is a family business, as we see his wife, Mickey James, joins him to, sh- to close the show. 205 Live, a non-Cruiserweight edition. We have Amari Miller defeated Cora Jade. Jade has a brand new gimmick and music, so long gone is the goth look, and now she's pretty much a skater chick. She comes out even with a skateboard. Miller gets her first win with a snapmare. Joe Gacy defeated Josh Briggs with a handspring Larry, winning the rematch and potentially setting up a rubber match. And Zion Quinn defeated Andre Chase in the main event with a torture rack into a neckbreaker. He looked really impressive in this match. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, we have what they call the Barbecue Brawl. Starts with Josh Alexander defeating Daniel Garcia. Really good match here. Alexander wins with the Divide Intervention Pile Driver. I definitely want to see these guys have a rematch. Maybe get a little bit more time. TJP defeated Ray Horace with a Mama Splash as Horace's first match in New Japan Pro Wrestling since February of 2021. And Hikaleo defeated Matt Morris. After the match, Hikaleo kept kept attacking Morris and tried to put him through a table, but Juice Robinson comes out to stop him. Ring of Honor, we have the women's tournament semifinals matches as Miranda Alizé defeated Trisha Dora by submission to advance to the finals, and she'll be taking on Roxy as Roxy defeated Angelina Love by submission with an armbar. A uh, pretty big shock and surprise they made this seem like as she goes into the finals, and we have two students coming from Booker T's Reality of Wrestling as Miranda Alizé goes one-on-one against Roxy at the Death Before This Honor pay-per-view. And the main event, LFI, Dragon League, Kenny King, LaBessia Del Ring, and Roosh defeated Shane Taylor Promotions, with Kenny King pinning Shane Taylor after a low blow. WWE main event, we have Jeff Hardy defeated Cedric Alexander, and Mansoor and Mustafa Ali defeated the Lucha House Party. The WWE Network editions of the week were Progress Chapter 120 and ICW Fight Club. That is it for this week. You guys can catch me here next week for another episode of Shot in the Dark. (laughs) 